on New Year's Eve, the last day of the year, 1963, Patricia and I wanted to go out and bring in the new year. And we went to the place where we frequented called the California Club. It was very popular, a lot of great acts. I mean, top of the line, legendary acts appeared at that place. No cover. <laughs> Just go in and see them for free. Great artists. This evening we went and I and Tina Turner and their 28-man review were performing. So Pat and I, we had a front, we was up front sitting I and Tina Turner's band was playing, and Tina and the Icats, they was rocking it, you know, slinging their hair, and had these, uh, you know, those dresses we used to wear with the fringe. They had on them fringe dresses, and they was just going to town with that fringe, and the hair movement, and the body movement, and I mean, they was just, you know, energy, nothing but pure energy and fun. And just lively, I mean, the, the inspiring as well. You know, that's how it was back in the day. And while I'm sitting there watching the show, I had this real powerful uh, command or demand of something making me, telling me to turn around something strong was telling me to turn around. Well, I turned around and my eyes and his eyes met. And we stared at each other and just continued like we were frozen in time. We locked up, as they say. <laughs> and we must have stared at each other for so long until I got embarrassed and I turned back around and started watching the show again. But not after thinking, wow, he is so handsome. And so I wiped him out of my mind, you know, just kind of like went on about my business and started watching the show again. And after a time, I had to go to the ladies lounge and um, got up. When I stood up, he stood up. And as I walked towards that way, because he was right in the booth up against the wall, right where the exit is. So when I got enough, close enough to him, he reached out and grabbed my hand and he told me he wanted to have me come back and sit with him. So I promised that I would. So I did, I came back and uh, he got out of the seat and ushered me in and then he sat next to me. And then he called the waitress over to order a drink for me. And I sat next to him. I was very comfortable. I felt like I had known him all my life. I felt like what a pleasant thing it was. You know, all I can think about was how nice and pleasant that experience was. And while we sat there, um, he told me his name was uh, Jimmy, and then he told me his name was James Marshall. And I like James Marshall, so that's what I choose to call him. I call him James Marshall. Now, I call him every now and then, I call him Jimmy, but James Marshall is how I see him and think of him. Anyway, James Marshall and I sat there 
uh, and just had our drink and he flagged down the cameraman that took pictures and had one of us made. And so uh, we had decided that we were going to leave after the show and go and have a bite to eat. So at, I didn't even know he was with anyone and he didn't know I was with anyone. But anyway, just about near the end of the show, my friend uh, Patricia Patrick, she joined us at the table and so did his friend who also was in the Little Richard band with him. As a matter of fact, Little Richard and their ensemble, which was also like a 27 man review, uh, were there for the Christmas holidays. They played there then, that night. I didn't go then, but that's when Jimmy and uh, Glenn played at that club. Anyway, um, Glenn came on over and they, we all was like a foursome then. So we walked out of the club. My car was parked right across the street under a tree. It was a 59 misty blue Impala with a white rag top. And I remember as we headed across the street to go get in the car, he said, nice car, just like that. And um, so we got in it and we headed toward the uh, sunset. We went down La Brea, got on La Brea and then headed all the way to sunset. And we stopped at this um, big restaurant called Tiny Nailers something on the same order as a Denny's or Norm's restaurant. It was in that particular style. Had the red booths inside, big bay windows where you could look out on the streets and see all the people moving around, the buzz and the traffic and everything. So we sat there and laughed and joked and ordered our food. We had burgers and fries and coffee. And the uh, subject was being thrown around about them playing with Little Richard and they made jokes about him. I won't tell you all of that, but uh, they were having fun at Richard's expense <laughs> for sure. Um, so it had been decided that I was going to spend the evening with Jimmy at his place. We drove to the Wilcox Hotel where he was uh, put up, uh, Little Richard uh, put, had, did put all his guys up and when his band members and everybody. So that's where Jimmy was staying at the Wilcox. I remember us pulling up in front of it and I gave my uh, friend Patricia the keys to the car. Glenn got up in the front seat with her and uh, they drove on off into the sunset. <laughs> we walked on into uh, the hotel in the lobby and went to his room. Room was very nice, very comfortable. He had a sofa in there and a wash basin and uh, bed and you know it was nice it was a nice big old roomy room so um we sat there and talked some and he got to picked his guitar up and started playing a few things and i didn't even know he was a musician you know until after we got together at and we're at the um uh restaurant actually you know I while I was sitting there uh, in the booth with him you know in the club nothing came up on the being a musician you know so I want to say for all those people out there that thought it was some kind of groupy thing it wasn't you know I, I, I didn't see him on stage and uh, you know, had to have him or nothing like that, you know. That's not what happened. He saw me. 
and he chose me and uh, he made the right choice <laughs>